Okay. The next guest uh, is extremely inspiring. Her name is Chuan Chuan, and she is an internationally recognized professional coach, speaker, and author working with global executives from Future 500 companies. But just a few years ago, she left her stable teaching job that she has been in for 14 years. She earned a good salary and was told that she had a lot of potential. But despite already achieving what people would say is conventional success, she felt like there was something more there. She knew that she had a dream to pursue a different career, but was afraid of being labeled as a bad wife and mother if she traded stability from an untested dream. And she took six years to pluck up the courage to pursue a dream and nearly ran out of money twice. Chen Chen will share how she made her new career happen despite her fears of failure and judgment and redefined her own measurements of success. So without further ado, give me a round of applause for Chen Chen! So good to be here. Hello, Chen Chen. Hi. <laughs> okay, let's go right in, right? Um, you were in a stable teaching career for 14 years. I think a lot of us would think of teacher as stable. It's like, you can't get any stable than that. Right? We'll always yeah. need teachers. Um, for 14 years, and you're a mom of two kids, right? Three. Three kids. Three sons. Okay, three kids. Yeah. And your husband, you had a husband as well. What gave you that courage to pursue your dream? And was there any, you know, thoughts that probably weren't the most helpful as you were making that decision? Mm. What gave me courage? Actually, I am a timid person since I was a kid. <laughs> I, I'm still a timid person, to be honest. So yeah. what propelled me forward was another fear. Fear of dying with regrets. Mm. Yeah. So it's okay. like you compare one fear with the other fear. Okay, I'm far more afraid of dying yeah. with regrets. But you're pretty young. So I'm surprised you think about dying so early. <laughs> yeah, I, and I think if for many of us, this is the same theme I'm seeing throughout. When we are young, we are healthy, we don't think we are going to die. Right? The thought of mortality never ever mm. strikes you. Yeah. But when I was 34, so I started quite late. Huh? When I was 34, I, was, I, I had a cyst in my uh, abdominal cavity. Mm. So I was pushed into the OT and it was really a funny one because a surgeon came to me and said, look, we're going to have a stoma, uh, uh, the, the, the back, and then blah, blah, blah. And I was like, that's not me. And then the other patient oh. beside me laughed. I was like, oh, that's me. I was like freaking out, you know, when the surgeon cut me out wrongly or something. Oh my gosh, he really he, did? No, 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 oh, he, he didn't, did he did oh Yeah, God. I mean, for goodness sake, it was like, luckily I said, no, I don't think that's my procedure. Mm. And then the lady beside me said, yeah, that's me. I said, oh no, I'm, I'm not going to have a stoma. But yeah. the, I think the moment was when you have to sign the letter mm. of indemnity that you might never wake up. From the GA, I was oh like, oh my was going gosh, your head I was like, oh my god, I have nothing to show. Oh, but if you had 14 years of that's yeah, a lot but to show. That, that was never my first choice. I, I think there's a lot of these uh, listening to parents. I, I'm really a daddy's girl, so mm. and my, my, my parents, uh, they stopped school when they were 13, 14. So for oh. them, stability is everything. Right, Entrepreneurship right. is risky and it's, it's unnecessary. So right. just be a government, uh, just be a civil so servant. your parents stopped school at 13, 14 years old to work? Yeah, because of family circumstances. Right. So and they had to work in yeah. order to provide for a family. How Correct. many do you have siblings? I have, so I'm, I'm the middle child. How many? Three girls. Oh, family so of they three had girls. to provide for three people. Yeah. I am guessing, mm -hmm. right, that because they stopped studying at such a young age and they worked so hard yeah. to you know, take care of you guys, to them, obviously, stability is important yeah. and be safe is the most important. Correct. Because they don't know anything else, right? I mean, they have worked so hard and that's all that they know. And you were in this teaching career for 14 years. You had parents that really cared for you and that wanted you to be safe, secure and stable. And you had a husband that I'm sure supported you, you yeah. know. Um, but, you know, like every mother, every mother would love their kids and want to give the, the best to their kids. You're at that stage where literally it's almost like you can't screw up. Mm. Probably, I mean, seriously, I think we all screw up. But at that stage, if it's me, I'm thinking, hey, you sure not? In my mind, I'm like, I think better be safe. 
you know, because you have a lot of liabilities. Ma. Yeah, true. When true. you decided to chase your dream, was there anybody around you that questioned you or that was unhappy? <laughs> the whole world? <laughs> Oh, everybody <laughs> like who who i mean siblings of course parents when i had to tell my parents that i'm going to resign i was like super scared mm. very very of? scared yeah what yeah were you of? i was like they were saying no so I, I knew i had to get my husband on my side mm. and then he's like okay here's the bottom line okay here's a non-negotiable please don't compromise family time mm. Uh, you know, bringing up three boys is a lot of work and please take care of your own health, mm. you know. Did he so, ever say like, he expect you to earn an amount of money? No, no, oh, no, no, no. So we, it's we, the rest Yeah, like. yeah. yeah. I, I mean, we, we do have a quite a minimalist um, mm. lifestyle. Like, for instance, I don't drive. The primary reason is because I'm a careless driver. Mm. Okay, I'm yeah. terrible at driving. So I'm a responsible road user. I don't want to drive. Mm. So I mean, maintaining a simple lifestyle yeah. helps. But you a mentioned lot. that your husband was on your side. Yeah, and that's so that's mainly, enough. Mainly, it's your oh, but <laughs> that was enough. So sweet. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, I don't blame my parents. I think yeah, for yeah. many of us, our parents have a certain way of thinking, mm. and we can't stop them from thinking yeah, a certain you. way, right? What were you thinking about yourself? Me? Was there anything that you felt as you were about to take that leap? Because you're a responsible person, right? Yeah. You know, you're a mom, you have three boys, there's so many things at stake here. Mm -hmm. Was there ever a moment that you doubted yourself before taking that leap? I always tell myself, well, I, if I don't try, I will never know. If I don't try, I will never know. Uh, I'd rather try and fail than to die without even mm. attempting it. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a very um, good yeah. principle. Yeah. Um, I think it's easy to say, but sometimes it's really hard to do, especially yeah. when there's so many things on the line. It's just easier to stick according to plan. Mm. When you were leaving, um, do you have any experience in business? Not at all. I learned everything from scratch. Wow. Yeah. So you had no experience in business. Where do you even get the idea to chase this dream? Where did this dream came, mm. come from? So when I left schools, I joined a, a business for one and a half Wait, years. So you left first? Yes, I left first and one and a half years I was in an in-between job. Well, now I'm curious, like, what was it that... Because in order for you to leave something that is so stable, there must be something that is so sweet that's pulling you. Yeah. So attractive. Mm. What is that desire? That desire... Mm, for me, because I already started my personal development mm. back in 2012. I, uh, like? I attended the John Maxwell program. Mm. So I flew yeah, I to Orlando. And okay, I mean, the backstory was I was having a lot of problems in my career, bad relationships. And eventually the pattern repeats such that I realized that I'm the problem because I'm the common denominator. Oh, right? I see. So, so bad relationships in the workplace. In the workplace, with people, a bad relationship with even myself. Yeah, mm. so that um, leadership program, I discovered coaching, training, speaking. Of course, being an introvert, I love the coaching one-to-one. -one. Mm. I love that notion of being able to yeah. help people find their fullest potential. Because that was something I was willing to do even in, in the late nights. Like mm. teachers, we wake up very early, right? We end the day late Wait, as I well. I think that, I don't know if you realise this, but you just dropped the gem. Yeah. When you're willing to stay up late to do something, to do stuff, that's yes. when you know you're on to something. Correct. No matter how tired you are after work, you OT already, but you still stay up late to do that thing, it's probably something that you're very interested in. Mm -hmm. And it's probably something you might want to explore. Yep, yep. Okay. Yeah, I can always remember, say, on the call with someone. At that time, we didn't have Zoom. Everything was on Skype, audio mm. call. I was practicing my coaching. Somebody from France, somebody whose face I will never ever see. Mm. But just that one hour coaching conversation where you can help the person sort out the issues yeah. and find a way forward. Ah, oh, so happy. What was the difference between you feeling so happy in that coaching session versus... Like teaching. I was good at what I did, but I think the happiness index was only probably half mm. because to a certain extent, the curriculum stays the same. I needed variety. So that is something that's more unique to me. Like kind of you want to know your strengths. You want to know what puts you in a state of flow. And that's mm. where knowing your strengths, knowing your unique combination comes in. So that compared with teaching mathematics, it becomes routine. Because yeah. I know exactly which step they would 
have a mistake. And I know yeah. exactly how to rectify I get you, it. I get you. You, know? you know, one thing that I realized as you're sharing your story of how you're in a pretty comfortable career, mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it, yeah. But you still decided to find more, like yeah. have a change. Yeah. Right? And you that being a teacher might be might be happy and fine with you when you're much younger, like maybe in two, three years in your career. Probably. Your career. Yeah. But the reality is that we have a long life and it's totally okay to make a different decision when you're 30, when you're 40, when you're 50. Nobody said you have to make a decision at the start of your life and stick that decision forever. Yeah. yeah. Nobody said, truly. But only when we take a step out of a comfort zone, just like going for that, all the way to Orlando, right? Mm. For, for um, who's it? John, John Maxwell. John Maxwell, yeah. yes, leadership. John Maxwell's event. That was the first time I travelled solo. Wow. And, and I was like, oh my god, I'm so scared. And I, I went, so I actually applied leave to leave, mm. to, to not be in school for yeah, teaching, yeah, which is yeah. like completely unheard of. Yeah. And I told my colleague, I'm so scared, I'm flying to Orlando on my own. And, my, and she looked at me, my, my colleague, oh my God, you are like 32, 33, grow up. <laughs> and harsh. I finally grew up, you know. Harsh, yeah. yeah, but I mean, that, that was but a... you needed to be uncomfortable in order to see more than what you are. Yeah, yeah, right yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. And I mean, that those moments where you step out a little bit and challenge the norms a little bit. Mm. I left my two kids at that time home, my husband and my helper. I have yeah. a lot of support, look yeah. after my kids. Then my dad was like rolling his eyes and he was like coming to drive me to the airport and yeah. I'm born in the year of the monkey and he said and then I came down with this like huge harvest sack and like this like <laughs> I don't know 20-30 kg of luggage I was struggling and then he said wow you are like the monkey king going to the west <laughs> Journey to the West, I was like, oh my god, it's like after so many yeah. years, I can still remember. That is amazing. That your yeah. dad sent you, even though maybe he probably wasn't the most supportive. Yeah. And I think one thing that you said that was um, extremely powerful is knowing what's your happiness index, mm. right? Like you're comfortable, but it's not, it could be better. It's, it's not that we are not grateful. It's like I'm grateful where I'm at, but hey, what's more? Yeah. I'm excited to explore this more. Yeah. Can I be more of who I am? Mm. I think everything happens for a reason. Like even the name of your show, Own yes. Your Voice show. For me, it was a lot about listening to my own voice. Okay, mm. I hear voices, okay, I'm not okay, hallucinating. How, I think uh. how do you listen to your own voice? It's like how you, do you know that you mm, want to take that leap? You, you are always drawn to doing something. Like when somebody say, you know, I have this challenge, I'm stuck. And I'll be like, no, I don't think you want to start. Come, let's talk. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to give a solution because that's not, not, that's not what coaches yes, do. Correct. But I truly believe that everyone can find the solutions and mm. let, let's have a conversation. And when they, when, kind of when their eyes light up, they're like, oh yeah, I never thought of that. I never knew that I could do that, you know. So it's that kind of conversations that repeatedly pull you into it. Mm. So in school, while I was teaching mathematics, I was much, much more attracted to things like uh, leadership development, moral education. Mm. I love talking about societal issues, moral dilemma, because it's about, you know, I mean, we, we all become adults. You have you got to make a stand, right? You have to choose something that's right for you. There's no one size fit all. Mm. So 100%. let's have these conversations. At least we yeah. have thought through it very thoroughly before we make that choice. Yeah. So those are the things I really love. Yeah. What is the difference between the success that you grew up thinking that you should follow mm. versus the success that you define for yourself now? Yeah, I, I grew up in, I mean, my, my whole extended family, we have like 80, 80 people, traditional Chinese family. For them, they think girls don't study so much, just study mm. to a certain level, get married, have children. Your success is if your kids and husband are happy. That's it. So... What I'm doing today, relatives will probably be like, why, why are you doing all these? But it's not up to them to mm. measure, you know, whether I'm successful or not. I mean, come on, like when I graduated, okay, good, fine. I had one kid, okay, man, before I had my first kid, they would say, oh, when, when are you going to have the first kid? Oh, mm. why so late? You know, why you know, so it's slow? it's interesting because their primary focus is kids. Like, when are you going to have your first kid? Yeah. Have anybody asked you how your career is? No, nobody bothered. That's interesting. Yeah, nobody bothered. Um, yeah. For them, after you have kids, there's no career for women. And mm. that was... Uh, you know how do you train a flea, right? There is that invisible ceiling 
Yeah, yeah. I refuse to be kept by it. How do you decide to question the ceiling? Mm. Question what you have been taught since young. So it's back to that um, fear of dying with regrets. Mm. Like, you know, if I had expired on that day at yeah, 33 yeah. years old, that's it? Yeah. Like, that's yeah. it? I yeah. think there's more to it in life. So that's something I, I needed to do. So, of course, the journey isn't like, it's not like I could envision exactly what I could achieve. Mm. There's always step by step by step. And once I reach one milestone, I, I, I would stand there and I would look back and I would like, oh, I didn't know that that was possible. Yeah. Now I know. Yeah. Now that I know this is possible, what else is possible? So it's that 1%. If yeah. 1% is too hard, let's just take a 0.1%. Yeah. So I think that, um, Chen Chen, you have mentioned so many golden nuggets in just that one sentence. Mm -hmm. Number one, asking yourself, what will I regret? Who will I regret not speaking to? Is there anything, anybody that, any conversations you need to have? Anything that you should be wanted to try, but yeah. because your life is over, you can't. Is there anything you will regret? Truly ask yourself that today. Yeah. Uh, and I think the second thing is just the importance of knowing yourself, respecting your growth, mm -hmm. celebrating yourself, especially when you're in an environment where people might be kind of not having the most supportive things to say. One thing that you mentioned, we will never know what is our journey 50 steps ahead of us. Yeah. We can only see what the first few steps are. And it's so important to have the faith to say, hey, I'm just going to take the first few steps. And I know that three steps later, I will find a way or people will come to support. I don't need to know what is there 50 steps later because we will never know. Life is never certain. Mm. If you want to be certain, you live in the past. Yeah, true, true. As long as we figure out the directional goals, I think that's mm. very important. Yeah. Know what is the relationship you want with mm. people. For example, yeah. when I work with clients, I value respect very mm. much. Please respect me as a professional. Mm. Otherwise, I'm not going to do business with that person yeah. or with that group. Yeah. And that is something that we also need to check for ourselves. Yeah. What is the support that we need? Then, as long as your directional goals are correct, you will know whether you are heading in the right direction. Yeah. If not, I, I mean, because I specialize in agile leadership, so I think it's like taking one step, let's treat it like an experiment. If things don't work out, okay, then what can I do? Yeah. Let me quickly adjust. It's also important not to have blind faith. Actually, one question I always ask myself is, what is the worst that can happen? <laughs> I love am that. I, and am I ready for it? If I'm ready for it, let's go ahead. If I'm not, then okay, maybe let me seek out a little yeah. more, you know, this uh, constructive and useful feedback or, or data. Yeah. I think one thing that I noticed about Chen Chen as you share, right, is you don't take action that is not thought out well. You mm. actually think. Like there's courage, yes. but you, you consider things like, okay, do I have enough savings? What is the plan that I have? Right? I don't need to have a full-fledged 50-step plan, but what's my first few steps? Do I have a backup plan? Things like that. Do I have people around that support me? That's the kind of vibe that I'm getting from you. Mm. You don't just take that step and go like, okay, I don't care what's going to happen. Mm. You actually plan. I'm not overly positive. Mm. Uh, I am hopeful. I am courageous in that sense. I am making a calculated bet okay. of whether it will if work. If there was maybe two to three things that you would say people who want to make a career change mm -hmm. need to do before they do. You mentioned a calculated yeah. step. What is that two to three steps? Mm, I think number one, know yourself very well. Okay. Know what you are capable of. Because when you put yourself out there, you must help people achieve the results. Mm. Like if I say I want to be a coach, but I'm lousy at it, yeah. No way, man. Nobody's going to pay you like recurring. Yeah, right? so be good at be it. Be good at it. Commit time to really sharpen the saw, right? Like if you talk mm, about Stephen Covey's, yeah. uh, you know, this phrase, sharpen your saw all the time. Mm. Second one, I, I also think about don't compare. Mm. Don't compare. Sometimes it's very easy for, for us to be sucked into that 
whole of like despair like we look at other competitors oh they are so great they're flying around so glamorous and then there i have three boys at home i cannot fly here cannot fly there i think don't don't compare there is joy in all the circumstances yeah and i i make the choice yeah. right like even now i am going to take up a doctor in business administration to further my education I will choose something that works for the family. Mm. I will not be resentful that oh I can't go there for four years. I can't mm. leave my family behind. So what you're considering I what the situation you already have. Correct, correct. Yeah. So don't compare. Be thankful for what mm. what we have. Okay. The third one, I would say, always watch out for evidence and collect data to validate if your hope is in in the right is is cast correctly. Mm. I like how you say find evidence because when find we find evidence. evidence, there's a higher chance we will find it. Correct. Right. Instead of focusing on the negatives, like I'm not good enough, mm -hmm. focus on hey, which parts am I improving in? Right. Mm. How can I improve the parts that might not be improving as fast? True. True. Mm. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna go to maybe one audience question. All right. Um, how did you navigate or striking the balance between the need to be practical and the desire to pursue your calling? Mm, practical versus pursue calling. Uh, actually, I do it in a very pragmatic approach, you know. Yeah. Please share. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, what is the half step? Mm. You know, half step. Half step. So, my first half step was leave the job. Okay, can I find the courage? Number one, leave the job. Can I resign? Can I give away all my teaching resources? That's one. Can I get my husband on my side? And I tell him very clearly, this is what I yeah. need. This is the kind of support yeah. I need. And yeah. describe, describe to him what it really looks like. Mm. You know, because we are talking about lifestyle changes. Yeah. Right now, it's number one. Number two, my next half step was I found a job where I was able to put my teaching uh, experience oh. plus learning how to run a business. That's great. I follow so my boss it's everywhere. Really, it's really thinking like how can I learn the skills yeah. that I need? What I'm do I la lack? How do I mm, find okay. that? How do I find that? Uh, something yeah. that Akans mentioned as well, the mentorship. Mm, very, very mentor. important. Ask great questions. Thank like you. how I got rejected so many times in my sales calls. Yeah. Right. So this brings us to one last question that I want mm. to pick, um, which I think someone is willing to share with the mic. So can we yes. have the mic out there? Please. So the question is from Ruben, the only person that wrote me. <laughs> so Ruben, come. Oh, that, that's Ruben. Hi, so um, I'm Ruben. I'm also um, budding as a, a coach as well uh, in mental wellness. I was wondering, have, has there ever been a session where like the session just went nowhere, they asked you a question that you can't really answer and then there was just no closure mm. overall. How do you feel afterwards? Do you feel like a failure? Um, what do you feel and how do you cope with it? And you know, um, did it make you rethink, rethink your, your choice. choices? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Thank um, you so much, Ruben. Thank you, thank yeah. you. Um, I think all coaches, budding coaches, when we learn something for at the beginning stage, we would encounter something like that. Uh, the key concept I learned as a coach and as a person is to be healthily detached. Healthily detached. We are often too attached to the outcome. Like in a coaching conversation, you want to help mm. the person. Like I, I work with leaders, they have like they run businesses that I know I don't understand at all. Mm. And I tell them that's not my field. Mm. But and I so can help you sort honest. out your step. You're honest about what yeah. you're not. Okay. Correct. But I can help them be clear about who they are and what kind of leader they want to become. Mm. Right? But I'm not attached to the outcome. Mm. And that is then the space where you can be the best mirror. That's what a coach must do. Be the mirror, observe, reflect back, and let the client, let the coachee choose what is the best path forward. Mm. We are not there to help them solve the problem. But I think the beauty of coaching conversations is the magic doesn't just happen in the session itself. Think of it as planting a seed. Mm. If you have planted a seed, a new seed in the, ses in the session itself, and it grows, then you have succeeded. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I think I love that, that, that de yeah. detachment is very important. That is beautiful because the thing is, you might be planting a seed, they are going to have other mentors and coaches along the way that waters the seed and yeah. waters the seed and maybe 10 years later, yeah. it blooms. Yeah. And I think as a teacher, you would understand this, true contribution is when you're willing to contribute even if you don't see yeah. 
Yeah. The fruits of your labor yet. I think even us, you see, sitting in this room together, yeah. having conversations, that is planting a seed as well. And as long as you have planted that seed, yes. and you have done it with the best of your ability, Correct. that is enough. Know that there will be someone else that will water that seed along the way because our success is not based on just one person, right? There are so many people in my life along the way that made me who I am today. Mm, mm. And it's not just one person, not mm. just one coach. Correct. Actually, Ray, uh, this is one I really want to add. We can grow even if we don't have mentors. Yeah. Every interaction, every human connection changes you. Mm. Look out for people around us. Look mm. out for those conversations. We always come out of such connections changed. I think that that is a beautiful advice for all of us after today's show. Look at the people around you and see who do you want to speak to mm -hmm. because you can learn from everybody, not everybody. just people that are older. Chen Chen, thank you thank so much you. for sharing your experience with us. Thank you. I love your practical approach. <laughs> thank you so much. A round of applause for Chen Chen. Thank please. you. Thank you.